It's time for Remodel Revolution. And now, an award-winning contractor with over 40 years experience. Here is Alex Guthrie. Welcome to another episode of Remodel Revolution. I'm so glad to be here with you today. From the world headquarters of Remodel Revolution, deep in the heart of the great state of Texas, where it's very hot right now. <laughs> It is summertime in Texas and it's hot. And because it's summertime in Texas and hot, we're going to talk about ways to make your house energy efficient. There's some things that uh, you want to do and some things that you don't want to do. Some things I'm seeing that are done completely wrong. And uh, I thought that that would be a lot of fun to uh, talk about today. And we're going to have with us, we have the honor of having with us today, the one and only, the amazing, world-class air conditioning contractor, Mr. Steve Lawton with Total Air and Heat. Hello, Mr. Lawton. How are you, sir? Morning, Alex. I'm doing great. That's good. You got, you got all trimmed up and clean. Got you a haircut. Trimmed the old beard there, buddy. Must be warming up if you're getting rid of the fur. <laughs> and my wife told me it's time to quit looking like a shaggy dog. Well... <laughs> Well, just don't act like a shaggy dog and you'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed today, uh, or I mean this week, that I, I saw a art, an article uh, that was posted in Dallas Biz Journal uh, that uh, refers to the canceling and delaying of 41% of the commercial construction projects in April. That is really stunning. Um, and it occurred to me that over the years, I have used that commercial activity in the construction industry as sort of a barometer of things to come in the residential industry. And the, the reason for that is because there is a trickle down effect that happens that where basically our money originates or our clients money originates in, with their jobs and if they're not building buildings or, or putting people to work or they're laying people off or they're canceling projects then eventually that filters down to us because they don't have the money to spend with us and I noticed over two or three recessions that one of the first indicators I noticed, and I'm look, I'm not educated in this, and I'm sure there's plenty of people that can argue with me about it that know a lot more about finances than I do, because I'm, I'm certainly no expert at it, but I've just been in business. I'm just getting started. I've been in business about 40 years, and so I've noticed a few trends that I learned to, <laughs> it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you see the, Steve, when you see the dog growling you know he's about to bite. <laughs> yes, sir. You and I have both paid for our experience. Yes, sir, we have. So give me your your thoughts. Is that now you've been in business all your life. You're your third, your second or third generation. Um, your son is now running your business with you, and your grandkids are in there sweeping the floor of the warehouse. So <laughs> what are your thoughts? I think everything you said about the commercial building trends is correct, it, that it is down. Uh, with this COVID situation out there though, and everybody working from home, uh, when normally the economy's down on the commercial side, you could say it's down on the residential side too. Yeah. But uh, that hasn't been our experience. Uh, of course, we've never had this COVID-19 before either, but our business is doing well, maybe even up a little bit. So uh, 
I don't, you know, you got your chart there for remodeling activity. Mm-hmm. But I think it, it too could be starting to trend up if it hasn't already. It looks like it may be going up a little. Well, it, yeah, it's starting to trend back up a little bit. There, uh, One of those is the Lira projections. And then the other one is is kind of the actual what's really what's really going on. There's cer- certainly a little bounce happening, which we should expect. Um, there's a a completely fascinating dynamic, like you were you were saying with this COVID, with this pandemic, people are officing from home, and I think that there's a long term dynamic change that's going to take place with our the way we do business. And so when I look at a, that, and that's what fascinated me about this whole uh, article in that I would normally look at that and go, oh man, we've got about 12 or 18 months until it just, you know, hits bottom. Um, that would, t- on a t- in a typical year, that would, that that is exactly what that would indicate to me. But yeah with COVID and with people officing from home, well, now we've got a whole new type of office situation where it's home officing now is as opposed to commercial. So I wonder what that does to, in the long term, what that does to the commercial industry uh, as far as just be the building owner. Are you going to be able to fill up those, those stations with people or are they all going to say, no, I'm, I'm going to work from home? What are your thoughts? No, I think going forward, Alex, there's no question that nothing's going to be the same again. Uh, I do believe there's going to be a lot more people officing from home permanently and that many businesses were maybe scared to try it in the past, but they've been forced to do so now. And they're finding that working from home actually is okay. And and it is productive. Uh, if you could avoid paying for that expensive brick and mortar office building and still do the same amount of revenue, why not let your employees work from home? So there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. And I think we're going to see a lot of things going down the road that's different. Uh, there's the, also another there's also another uh, side to this and that's from the the actual workers point of view the person working from home has um, ha, you know they're going through a lot of changes by working from home um, they've they have to contend with barking dogs trash men and yard people <laughs> not to mention <laughs> not to mention the kid that runs in and and yeah. you know throws up on the floor in the middle of the uh, zoom meeting. <laughs> Yes, but hey you know through all of that lately she works for a big advertising company and she just had a her baby daughter about a month ago but yeah she's been working from home since uh early february and she's not anticipated to actually go back to work in the office till the end of the year sometime yeah i I, it's it's great it's great now i think divorces are up um i think that (laughs) I think there's some side effects that, you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of, but, uh, oh, this is a remodeling show. And this is why I brought this up because, um, in the law, in a typical trend that would affect my business in about 12 to 18 months in a typical year, but there is nothing typical about this year. That is for sure. And so I'm not sure how it's going to pan out now. Read, go read the article. I have it uh, on the uh, channel. You can see it. Check it out and email me and let me know what you think about it. I think that uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to say the least. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Steve and I are going to start talking about radiant barriers. We'll be right back. 
The hardest working and arguably most important system in our homes is our air conditioning and heating system. It heats the air, it cools the air, and it filters the air. That's why it's so critical to have it checked and maintained by the very best professionals available. It's time to contact Total Air and Heat at TotalAir.com. Get that system pruned and tuned. If you want to have the very best experience, you've got to hire the very best company. Total Air's employees are honest, well-trained, and thoroughly background checked. I never have to worry about sending their technicians out to my clients' homes. Family owned and operated for three generations, Total Air and Heat has been a fixture in North Dallas for over 60 years. Total Air is a proud dealer of the train air conditioning systems, and you know how hard it is to stop a train, so give them a call at 972-881-0020. That's 972-881-0020, or contact them at TotalAir.com today. Welcome back to Remodel Revolution. I'm here with my good friend, Steve Lawton, and my co-host for the day. Steve is a world-class air conditioning and mechanical contractor. He's, he's, uh, his business is family-owned, has been for over, what, 65 years now, Steve? Coming up on 65. We so started you, in 1957. You know, you know a couple of things about this, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. A little bit. So, well, I'm always learning, though. Yeah. Well, we're all we're all always learning, aren't we? And anybody that thought they weren't still learning three months ago figured out that there was a whole lot most of us didn't know about the human condition. Okay, so let's talk about radiant barriers. And the uh, we're going to put a, some pictures up. We're going to talk about them. And the first one we're going to put up is a picture of an attic. It's an open attic, and it is actually explains how radiant barrier works. And I thought this was uh, very relevant right now. I wanted to um, explain this because a lot of people don't understand what we're trying to do with radiant barrier. So radiance is basically the rays that come out of the sun and they penetrate through anything non-metallic. And they go all, all the way through your decking of your roof. They go through the insulation, through the attic, into your furniture, into your body, and heat everything up. It's, a, it's basically just energy coming through. And what Radiant Barrier does, it's a foiled product. It's just like foil, and it's it reflects it back out. It, it, those rays hit that foil, hit that radiant barrier, and it reflects back out away from the house. And one of the things I saw this week was a somebody advertising a radiant barrier installation. And the way that it was depicted in this picture for our area here down in Texas where it's super hot in the summer and we have also humidity, it, the picture that they showed originally was not correct. The one we have up right now is correct. Um, and here's the difference. In our weather zone, our climate zone, we are trying to, down here where it's warm or hot in the summer and fairly warm in the winter, we're trying to keep the heat out of our houses. That, that's the whole objective, is to keep the heat out so we can con better control the inside temperature. Now, what we've learned over the years is that if we can prevent the radiance from coming in, we can bring the attic to an ambient temperature that is equal to the outside of the house. That's what we're trying to accomplish. So instead of having a 175 degree attic and when it's 100 degrees outside or 200 degree attic when it's 100 degrees outside, we have a 100 degree attic. And that gives us an optimal um, temperature range for Steve's equipment to work in an unsealed attic. Your thoughts on that, Steve? Yes, Alex, I could not agree with you more. Uh, you know, uh, in the northern part of the country that has basements, most of the ductwork is ran in conditioned space. But down in Texas, 
you know, we like to make ice cream in the attic and run our ducks <laughs> to the attic. And uh, so uh, trying to make cold air in an attic this 175, 200 degrees is not good. So we learned, uh, we've learned some, some um, do's and don'ts about radiant barrier. One of the don'ts is there's two different ways to put it on. One way they do up north is they put the radiant barrier on the floor of the attic. We have a picture coming up of an attic space that is absolutely not the way you would want to do it here, for sure. Um, this attic, now this attic space right here, this picture we're showing, and for those of you that are just listening or listening to the podcast, go to the uh, YouTube channel for Remodel Revolution and watch this video along with the podcast so you can understand what we're talking about. But in this this picture, the for some reason, and they, they may have had a good reason, I can't tell by the picture, but I can tell you that if I walked in and saw this in pretty much any house, I would go crazy because it is so wrong. There's no point in putting radiant barrier on the top of the or on the floor of the attic and on the rafters of the attic it's it's absurd um all you've done is cre create an oven you haven't you haven't helped anything but you could do your biscuits up there now you you could do you could do a pot roast yeah <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> you could you could put your bacon on the uh, baking sheet set it on the floor and come back a little while later and it's crispy Yes, sir. <laughs> if you can get out of there before you're crispy. <laughs> yeah, that's the real issue. And so uh, what we've learned is that in an unsealed attic, now a sealed attic is where you would foam the rafters, foam the side walls, but not the floor. You would foam the basically the exterior walls and rafters in the house or the we call it the envelope of the house so it's all sealed and that is a super efficient way to do it but typically houses aren't sealed uh, particularly older homes and so what we're trying to do is control the temperature in the unsealed attic as well as we can to get that ambient temperature we're trying to reach so the radiant barrier that's on the bottom of the rafters prevents the radiance from coming in. Now I've gone up with a, a laser thermometer and I have recorded temperatures in, when we're doing radiant barrier in an attic where I will take the temperature of a rafter in the untreated part of the attic, the original attic. And that would be, I think the last time I did it, it was 140 degrees. The actual rafter was 140 degrees. And then I went to the sealed part that we had done. No, no, no. I went in the next day after we'd done the whole attic. And I did the same thing, same time of day, same temperature outside. It was 30 degrees cooler. Now, Steve, how does that affect your air conditioning system, just that 30 degrees when your AC system is in the attic? It's dramatic, Alex. Uh, you know, in the picture you showed a few minutes ago, you will notice that there was no equipment, ductwork, or anything up in the attic. It was pretty much just an empty attic. Uh, versus in Texas, in particular, or really the southwestern part of the United States, almost all the time is a minimum of the ductworks in the attic. Well, our duct is insulated typically with R8 insulation, but homes built even just a few years ago have R4 to R6. So the hotter the attic is, the more heat is gonna absorb into the ductwork. And I've seen scenarios where the attic was so hot that the air leaving the, the coil in, on the system was in the, let's say, 55 degree range. By the time it got to the outlet into the room, it was 75 degrees. It picked up 20 degrees in the attic. And, and it's very common to see it pick up three to five degrees. And so what happens is when, you're, when your system kicks on and you're standing, you're standing underneath 
that supply. That's a hot, humid air. <laughs> You're thinking, well, I'm going to get this nice, warm, uh, cold breeze and cool me off and knock that sweat off of me. <laughs> it comes yeah. out and it's hot and it's humid and it's and you're like oh man and a, a good friend of ours uh yours and mine uh with the initial cm just bought a house and was telling me just the other day that every time his air conditioning system kicks on he gets a nice warm breeze right right off the bat and uh that and we're going to have him on the show and explain why he made such a poor decision when he bought that house that'll be <laughs> that'll be in a week or two when I get him out of bed before 10. Um, I, uh, <laughs> so uh, radiant barrier is, all, there's also a radiant barrier decking. So um, now if you drive around Dallas right now, you will see about a bazillion roofing companies putting new roofs on houses because we've had so much inclement weather that included big pieces of frozen stuff falling out of the sky called hail. And so everybody's getting a new roof, and that's great. And a lot of these houses are getting new decking as well because we had a tornado, and the tornado knocked trees down on top of houses. And so they're having to actually repair the underlayment of the roofing as well as replace the shingles. This is a great opportunity to use a radiant barrier uh, plywood. The radiant barrier is actually on the plywood and when they put it down on the roof and they have to put the foil side down facing the attic, um, that is a great way. And I'll tell you, it'll save so much money on your bills and it, it's something that you notice, actually you, you notice those savings like the next billing cycle, that's how abrupt that is, how abrupt a change it can be. But the other things you have to follow through with is you have to follow through with good insulation. And then and Steve's going to talk about when we come back from this next break in a couple of minutes here, we're going to talk about duct work and checking and making sure your ducts are sealed. And, that, and we're going to hear a couple of stories about uh, I know I've walked up in uh, many attics and found disconnected ducts, and the attic was kind of cooler than the house in, in the summertime. And so it, and it, the point that I want to make with this is that when you're having your air conditioning system checked just to make sure it's running right, you really want someone to go up and check your duct work and make sure you don't have something that, a, I don't know, maybe a squirrel knocked loose or something like that. Cause that happens. And sometimes yeah. old ones just fall apart. Yes, sir. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to address the duct work. We'll be right back. Sometimes it's a question of do I call or don't I call the foundation repair company? But what if I tell you that I know a foundation repair company that will tell you if you don't need foundation repair? That's right. Hargrave and Hargrave Foundation Repair has been in business for over 50 years, and they know the difference. One of the last family-owned foundation repair businesses in North Texas, not only are they honest, they know what causes your foundation to move, and they know how to fix it. Don't be duped by fly by night foundation companies that provide shortcuts and messy fixes call hargrave and hargrave foundation repair at 972-442-3415 at the first sign of trouble hargrave uses the chance helical pier system exclusively because it's the highest quality most reliable helical pier money can buy 972-442-3415 or contact them at hargravefoundation.com It's summertime, and we know it's summertime in Texas because paint peels off your house as it bubbles up from the heat. Water boils. When we see, um, we, we see birds, they don't just bathe in the bird bath. They sleep there at night. That's how hot it is. Birds turn into ducks. And the other reason you know it's really hot is because you have to call Steve Lawton at Total Air and Heat, and you have to say, Steve, my house will not get cool. 
what's the first thing you do, Steve, when, when someone, when you get that call, what do you, what's your first advice to them? I would start with, has the system had any kind of service in the last few years? Most air conditioning systems run enough that it's equivalent to a car going 75,000 miles a year. Okay. You have to move the heat that's in the home to outdoor. So the system needs to be clean. Second step, we're going to look at the ductwork. Is it sealed? Is it the right size? So let's talk or about the ductwork. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested because, uh, uh, of course, we don't know how ductwork works in our attic, and we don't care. All we care about is that we're not sweating the whole time we're in our house, right? But yes, that's true. And Absolutely. so your duct has, you know, in, a, in an older home, I mean, they use duct tape because that's what it's for. It's supposed to do something good. <laughs> it does for maybe two to five years. It lasts that and, long. <laughs> yeah. And then, and yeah. My, my motto is use duct tape for anything but sealing duct work. <laughs> uh, but that's really not 100% true. It's just the glue that's on the tape itself eventually gives up and then you get a lot of leakage. If you use mastic like we do and you paint over that tape, it's there forever. And it's kind of insane, but it's true that we run a load calculation on the house. We allow for 30% duct leakage. So that means- 30%. That, you know, yeah, if you got a five ton air conditioning system, we're allowing over one ton of loss capacity because of duct leakage. And is that like a 24 hour period? I mean, how, what's that based on? The load calculation is based on the size of the house. The uh, duct loss is based on air changes per hour. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can actually measure with instruments how much airflow there is, how much it should be versus how much it actually has. Like you've mentioned, Alex, many times you go in the attic and the attic is pretty comfortable. Yeah. Ducts have gotten knocked loose, whether that's by people or critters. It doesn't really matter, especially if you have metal duct, uh, whether it's in the attic or under the house. I can't tell you how many times we've gone and found those ducks completely crushed, separated, you name it. And uh, it's not, well, I, it's I know there. that when I know that when I have a crew working on a house, working on a remodel, and I and it's in it's in the summertime, and and the guys are volunteering to work in the attic. I know that there's a duck loose somewhere in the attic. It's like a dead giveaway. Um, and so I have I've gone in attics, and I have found as many as two places where ducts have have dislodged for whatever reason and they're laying up there in the attic and they're just blowing cold air and there's one yep. other there's another thing that happens it's really uh, a, a real tell when you have an issue now our biggest uh, part of air circulation in the system is the return air is it not yes sir and so we know what's our first uh, clue that we have a leaky return air system in the attic? Well, the whole system is going to be out of balance. Uh, I always talk to customers when they call me about duct cleaning. Well, what makes you think your ducts need to be clean? Well, my home is dusty. <laughs> and uh, so dust in the house is usually caused by duct leakage and or an improper duct system. If you have a house and the carpet around the baseboards on the perimeter of the house, if that carpet area is discolored and darker, your carpet's acting as an air filter for all the air that's being pulled into the house because your house is out of balance. So what happens often is that the duct in the, the a section of duct in the attic will have a little hole in it and, and that's, negative air pressure so it's actually sucking the attic air yes into that system and redistributing that wonderful dusty 
yucky attic air all over the house. It's wonderful. Now, sometimes, excuse me, often when I walk in a house and I walk through a hallway where there's an attic stair, I can actually smell the attic air. Yep. And that is because we, in our lack of understanding things in years past, we just threw that old attic stair up there. It leaks air. It's, it's kind of halfway open to the attic. So every time that system kicks on, it sucks air straight out of that attic. That's why they make attic tents. And so, yeah, exactly. So they make an attic tent, which is a really inexpensive thing that you can buy. You can install over those attic stairs and seal it. So I've also done things like put weather stripping around the door or whatever. You know, we've done, there's a lot of things you can do or several things that you can do to improve it. Uh, another place that you get a lot of attic air leakage into a home is around recessed cans if they're not sealed up. Horrible, yes. If they're not sealed. Um, I think the statistic is is each recessed can light that is not sealed has the ability to pull or allow about 100 CFM of air around each can light. Yes, yeah. Return system has 1,200 CFM of airflow. Now, every place that you have a hole in your wall, Alex, what's a, I don't have a hole in my wall. Every place that you have a light switch, you have a hole in the wall. Every place you have a plug, you have a hole in the wall. Yep. Every place you have a door and in going into a room, you have a hole in the wall. And typically, those things are not sealed. I mean, and they're pulling in in one way or another. They are, they, they can pull air from the attic into that wall cavity right into your house. Absolutely. And you know what really makes it worse, Alex? How many houses you go into that have return air grills on the wall? Yeah. <laughs> Most of them. Yeah. And yeah. so in those, those are just sheetrock chases that are not sealed. And you have electrical that runs from one stud to the next, plumbing pipes, water pipes, whatever. And those have not just little bitty holes, but great big old holes there. It's easier to get the stuff yeah, through. Turn air pulling out of a stud space. It's, it's insane. Venting it's the true. walls. <laughs> And all of that pulls air out of the wall, out of the attic, into your house. So a great plan right now. You're stuck at home. It's a pandemic. The, world, the world's coming to an end, but you can help yourself right now. Seal all of that. You can buy you gaskets. Can yourself. Yeah, help yourself. That's right. Um, you can seal the, you can buy gaskets that actually will go over you, where you pull the light switch cover off. You put the little gasket behind it, screw it back on. You, you can actually seal around those light trims, uh, that are in your ceiling. You can do these things. You can go around your windows, around your doors with some caulk, and you can actually make a dramatic change in the comfort and uh, of, of the house in the air temperature but also your wife will quit telling you that you need to dust the furniture. It, yes. It, it, everybody wins. Yes. <laughs> well. It's going to save you a lot of money on your utility bills. Well, it, it does. It, it, it saves you a ton of money on your util, utility bills. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you want to just call a contractor, you want to get the right person, you need to call Alex Guthrie Construction. We've been in business for about 40 years. We have remodeled large projects. We've remodeled small projects. We've built new homes. We do outdoor living areas. We'll come in and turn your kitchen into your dream kitchen, your master bathroom into your dream bathroom. Alex Guthrie Construction, is competitively priced. The owner, well, he's awesome. <laughs> so give Seems us a call. <laughs> That's right. So you give us a call at 469-446-8508 or contact me, Alex, at alexguthrie.net. I'll come out and check out your project. 
and we'll have a great time. I'll tell you what, Alex is one of the few guys I know from a construction standpoint that considers all the things we've talked about today. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate that endorsement. And I really appreciate you being on the show with us today and co-hosting with me as always. It's so much fun having you. Well, I love being part of your show, Alex. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And and thank you, Jason, at the uh, Mr. Engineer. And thank you, On Air Media, all of our friends here. We love you. Thank you to all of our sponsors. We're so happy that you're part of our family. And, of course, thank you to our audience who we could not live without. We love you so much. I've been communicating with people all over the country this week and it's been really a lot of fun until next week this is alex guthrie signing off have a great week the views and opinions of this program are for educational and entertainment purposes only and are not intended to replace the recommendations of a hired professional you can catch remodel revolution anytime follow the show on the website remodelrevolutionradio.com or on social media facebook Instagram, and Pinterest using the handle at Remodel Revolution Radio. You can always listen to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in. And watch the show anytime on YouTube.